So go ahead and open up to chapter 4, I believe it is. And we did, what was it, um, 4 through the end of the chapter, odds, evens. How would you feel comfortable going about that material? Do you want to translate them all over, or do you want to just ask questions that you might have about any of the particular translations? Instead of going to the board, because it'll take a, uh, a vast amount of time to it says write a lot it out, of time. and we don't have that <laughs> kind of time, because um, I do want to get through, all the way through the exercises here, and then move on to the next chapter. So what we will do is we'll start with anybody who wants to volunteer to read and translate, and we'll just keep on going. Sure. Which one? Uh, starting with number four. Therousen. 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 Huey. 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 Dora. Good. We bear son. No, you. Um, they. Bear sons gifts. Okay. Uh, Try to smooth it out. Thank you. Um, boy. <laughs> they bear gifts to sons? Not quite. Okay. So when we Start with our sentences. Well, I, if I can pick it out, I've got um, Dora here, mm -hmm. which is a neuter pending. Good. It's a nominative. Um, so maybe, maybe. It could be either one of three. Yeah. When we start with these translations, it is easiest to remember okay. one of the little details that he talked about in chapter two or three, I don't remember what it was. What is the normal word order, the default word order of Greek in the New Testament? Oh, um, for, so, um, good. VSO language, English is an SVO, subject, verb, object. But right. Greek is a verb, subject, Object. Now, this is not going to hold true all the time, so if you default to this as every single one of the examples that you get, then you're going to get some wrong. But, okay. verb, subject, object. Okay. Now, then I looked at the, uh, the verb at the beginning, that's bear. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then the usin tells me it's a future third person plural. All right, if we had uh, the future, it would look like what? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. It would be... Fair Susan. So, yeah, it is. So, it's the present. Good. Okay. So, this tells us present. Okay. Well, technically, the fact that it's the default stem here without any sigma or anything else tells us that it's present. Okay. This tells us something else. It's called the person, number, suffix, and it tells us what? Third plural. Third plural. So we are looking for 
Well, we can either say it's they, that would be to start off, but that is the internal subject. Or we could also look for an external subject to supplant the they. That would be the sons over there. Good, so this now becomes sons. Bear. Good. Yes. Good. And you see here the ah uh, ending. You already made this observation. It could have been the nominative. Yeah. Could have been the accusative. And it could have also been the vocative. Which gets us a little confused. But we have oi to help us out. Because o, I mean, uh, os, u, o, on, e, oi. That is sons and the nominative plural. Questions about it? Bear? Mm -hmm. The same as bring? Yes. To bear up or to bring. Another way to translate it would be sons <laughs> bring gifts. Yeah, Greeks bear gifts too. Mm -hmm. Just to watch out. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we are doing too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, number six. Yeah, I want to do it. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> what they is um, they is going to be uh, singular third. Good. And Left is um, to see. Good. So he, she, it sees. Good. Um, we us is son. Os is nominative singular. Mm -hmm. Established that uh, huios, right, is your nominative singular. Mm -hmm. So sons see, and you're not going to have another nominative in this clause. Uh, well, yet you're not. Uh, so it's safer to say that it's probably the accusative. What do the sons see? Okay. Oh uh, yes, I'm sorry. It's a sun sees. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so it's plural temples. Mm -hmm. um, and then Kai's and and Waikus is uh, house or household. And oops would be plural accusative. Mm -hmm. So um, the sun sees temples and a house. And ha you said it, you <laughs> you've got the uh, the um, not, it's not called parsing. It's called the, you declined it right. You said it was plural. Oh. Uh, Accusative. You translate it. Oh, wrong. houses. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. So, sun sees temples and houses. Let's back up a little bit from the translation and go ahead and do a, a, uh, a slight review. <clears throat> so, we have learned our present active. Indicative verb. Anybody remember the endings for that? Oh, yeah, Omega. 
O A C A A Min Min Tag Tag And Husen Husen Good What distinguishes the present from the future? Your sigma Good Sigma where? Before the Before the suffix. Before the suffix After the Stem Stem Good So Luso Says Say Salmon uh, Sete Susan Good. So we would translate this uh, if we had the verb uh, lepo. We would translate I am seeing or I see and we would translate it over here how? I will. I will see. Good. Seems like we've got verbs pretty well. Or pretty good. Uh, they're not too difficult. Where the slowness comes is when we get to the case system. So that I, I wanted to cover that first and I'd forgotten that I wanted to cover that first. So let's then do that. That verbs. Last week or three weeks ago, however long ago it was, we covered the second declension, which had nouns of the what genders? Masculine and neuter. What is the function of the case system? Why do we have it, and what does it do for us? What now? Common endings. Common endings, noun endings, and it allows us to arrange a sentence in the way that we want to. Cases tell us so how a yes, how a uh, word functions in that system. Now, is it just nouns? No. Oh. Um, this week we will get into the first declension, okay. and then the week after that we will deal with adjectives. Adjectives are also declined. The wonderful thing about them is that after next week or this week, however far along we get, uh, we will know the first and second declension and the adjectives will be declined according to the first and the second declension. So the, mm -hmm. well, well, the third declension comes in <laughs> next semester. Oh. Yeah. So it, it's okay. It hits a long way away and Getting these declensions down is the foundation for the nominative uh, or the nominal system or the adjectival system. How many declensions are there? Just three. Okay. Latin has five. Yeah. Yeah. But wait, what, what do you see what's coming? <laughs> Just like if you learn the masculine of the second declension, if you learn uh, one of the sets of endings for the first declension, Everything else functions according to rules that you can just derive from. It's very, very simple. Well, we're getting ahead of ourselves and we're getting a little excited, but really, <laughs> it's not going to be too bad. Nominative functions have subject. The subject. subject. Good. Genitive functions have possessor. Possessor. Uh, that's one of the one of the most common ones as possessive, but it can also just be a simple indirect. descriptive. Yeah. Not indirect. Not yeah, direct. You use the, usually in English you use the word of. Yes. Yeah. It's a tie to it. Absolutely. Uh, genitive, nominative, genitive, dative is? To. Indirect object. Good. To indirect object. For now we're learning indirect object. It can also be uh, with reference to or for the benefit of. Um, those are some of the different uses. But we uh, a ways away from that. Accusative is? Direct object. And the vocative is just an interjection. An interjection. Like Debbie, come. Something along those lines. Uh, all right, so let's start getting the endings here. Masculine and nominative. Singular. Os. 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 Genitive. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Dative is O with a. I owe such good. Good. Accusative is. Oh. On. 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 
Vocative? Eh. Eh. Good. This is the only one that's different. Plural. Oi. Oi. Boy. Genitive. Own. Own. Dative. Goose. Voice. Voice. Sorry. Goose. Goose. <laughs> and then? Oi. Good. Neuter. Own. On. Mm. Yes. On. Thick. Yep. <laughs> Concentrating on writing this and that. Okay. Yeah. Genitive. Ooh. 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 Good. Dative. Uh oh. Good. Accusative. Uh -huh. Good. Vocative. Uh -huh. Good. Plural. Ah. Uh -huh. Ah. Uh -huh. uh -huh. that up there as a reference for you to work with. Number eight. <coughs> Any takers? Well, is it pronounced? Slave is the subject. Good. Um, the gift is accusative. Um, mm -hmm. So it's it's a singular. It's a, just a gift. Mm -hmm. um, the apostle um, is got an ending of the the mm -hmm. So. Um, A slave brings a gift to an apostle. To an apostle. Mm -hmm. Good. Questions about that? Number 10. Of uh, Luz, 
No, and I think that when we look at um, the third plural, that's when we typically get confused as to whether it's the future or not. We have luo, and then when we get to the third plural, we see lu usen, and we think that the uh, sigma here means the future because sigma does signify the future, and every other ending that we have for the present uh, active indicative are two to three letters. But remember that your whole person number suffix is usen, so if this were to be future, it'd have to be lu susen. Mm -hmm. So, lose? Yes. My daughter. Servant of apostles? Yes, so put it all together. Uh, so, the sons lose servants of apostles. Mm -hmm. Oh, perfect. Fourteen? Weird sentence. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> I have, I've been working on making English to Greek sentences to expand this, and the limited vocabulary that you have makes some really, really ridiculous sentences. <laughs> so no, we're, we're in C spot right now. Aren't we? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, fourteen. We? Um, mm-hmm. Prophete? Lagus? Fioes. So we're starting off with a knot and we have writing in the second person plural. Good. And logus is the words in the Accusative plural and Krios is sons in the um, dative plural. Mm -hmm. So let's see. And we say we don't write words to sons. Not we. Uh, I'm sorry. You don't write words to or they, yeah. You, you, you all don't write words to sons. Mm -hmm. okay. So is the future, right? You all? Uh, you all is a way of denoting uh, plural. Now, if that you, said, yeah. said that you said that, that would win well. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. So this is uh, present, okay. graf, grafete is present. But to have that in the future, it would be grapsete, because the phi combined with the sigma produces your C. Yes. Okay, so 16. All right. Um, that's a tongue twister. <laughs> <laughs> Knowledge is A would make it um, okay. Is that a verb? Genuske? Yeah. It is. Okay. So to be noun, the noun form of that is gnosis. Okay. So it would be he, she, it knows. Mm -hmm. um, apostolus is apostle. Um, is plural, so apostles accusative. Um, so that would make it direct object. Um, just a quick question. Mm -hmm. 
um, in my own mind, I understand direct object more readily than accusative. Do you recommend I try to understand accusative or try to understand? So the, the accusative can be used in a number of different ways okay. later on. Okay. For now, it's best to know it as the direct object because that's what you're going to see very commonly. Okay. But it will be used in ways that are not the direct object as well. Okay. Uh, so. So I could translate it as a direct object, but I should learn yes. an accusative. Yes. Okay. Just think of uh, direct object as a subset of accusative. For now, all you know about the accusative is direct object, so they seem to be. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That that will change for all of your cases. Okay. Awesome. Um, kind is and. Yeah. <laughs> kind is and, and then. Ferre is. Um, is she it brings uh, Dora is um, since it's gift, it's probably going to be nominative. I'm going to guess plural. So gifts. And then tech noise is um, children data. Good. Put it all together. <coughs> so um, Was the noun so gifts no apostles? All right, let's let's start over. Uh, Can't be right. <laughs> understanding clauses will very uh, very much help you understand, uh, or at least get a better feel for translation. So when okay. you see a chi, a chi separates it. Now a chi can can separate clauses, but it also can function like a and does in a regular English sentence to link two objects. Okay. So it would be thinking that this could be separating your clause okay. out. Now you see two verbs there, so you know you do have two clauses there. So okay. tackle each clause okay. One at a time. He knows. Apostles know. Mm -hmm. um, now, before we do the second clause, apostles. He, he knows apostles. It is he knows apostles. Mm -hmm. Okay. When you went through there, you you declined and parsed almost everything right except for gifts. Okay. Uh, the, that was a nominative. I mean, that's an accusative. Accusative. There's always, it's always interesting to see the, the disconnect between the, uh, the declining and parsing and the translation. Most of the time, it's that somebody doesn't parse or How translate. I mean, parse or decline, right? Yeah. You translate, right, according to the feel of the sentence. Yeah. That was my, my thing, too. Is that, with that alpha there, you know, you really don't know if you... Mm -hmm. So you were going in, it's uh, he knows, or he, she, or it knows apostles. Mm -hmm. And, and he brings um, mm -hmm. gifts to children. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. You were going to say something? No, I was, I was feeling out what you were saying. You have to get the feel of the yeah, sentence. You do. Help determine what a door is. So. Guy is and it is, but and is but both and uh, both and it rarely has the meaning of but. Uh, Allah or de uh, have 
within their meaning, but uh, Kai can mean and, it can mean even, also all according to um, the sense of the passage or the yeah. sentence. So, I don't want to get into that. <laughs> we'll keep on translating. I, I know that when we begin translating like this, especially since I'm putting you on the spot, you probably feel nervous and irritated that I'm doing it to you, but you will very quickly be able to, um, over time, feel out the sentences, and this will get a lot easier for you. So number 18. sitting here thinking, wait, you told me that the nominative is the subject, right? Yes, you did. I did. But we have a, a to be, we are, I mm -hmm. am verb in this sense. So something is being predicated oh, about the, the apostles. Eternal and external object. Uh, no, 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 because no, if, if you do that, then you're going to have uh, apostles are. Okay. In order to do that, you have to have Asin, not Esmin. What we have here is called, for those of you that paid attention in third grade English or whatever it was, high school English, uh, we are is a predicate nominative. So the subject is the internal subject, we are tells us that something is being predicated about we. We are apostoloi. So here's your first foray into a meaning that the... Well, these are slaves, not apostles. Slaves. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Servants. Yes, servants. Uh, this is our first foray into a use of the nominative that is not the subject. It is, in this instance, a predicate nominative. Does that make sense? 
So it says we are servants. We are servants. But. But, yes, and here is our contrastive but, but. Allah. Uh, do loose the salmon. I'm thinking that it's we teach, it's a big psalm. So he's the same servant, but he's uh, oh. a different servant. Oh, but it's not, it's we will. He's the same servant? Um, I think the different servants are in view here because didak salmon yes. is still referring to we. We still have the it's main the, ending. But it's the we will. Because mm -hmm. the didak is the root in that of the S for the future. Good. So, so this is not yeah. present, it is future. Right. So we will we are servants, but we will teach servants. So servants are teaching servants. And notice here how the case, knowing the case system is very important because in the first clause there, do loyesmen is according to that VSO verb, subject, object. Um, well, I guess it's not really because it's predicate, but we have in the second clause the object being fronted before the verb. Where we would expect it to come after. So we do need to know the cases because the word order can change on us. Mm -hmm. 21 has that internal external subject, doesn't it? 21 has the same construction for the first clause. We'll go ahead and look at that. Este angeloi kai ferete dora anthropois. So este is your second person plural yeah. of Amy. You are angeloi is angels. And that is your predicate nominative. Kai brings, begins a new clause, but. so and, Allah or De would be but. You are angels, and ferite, present active indicative, second plural. You bring up or bear dora, gifts, anthropois in the dative plural, to men. Not a possible. I got that in the center, so I'm about it. <laughs> so what's the point of there? You all are angels and you are angels and you bring gifts to men. Twenty-two. So Susan Apostoloi. Anthropus Thanatu. <clears throat> so, so Susan class is from what verb? Uh, it's the same. Yes, uh, in the Greek though. No, uh, so so. No. No. Oh, so so. I didn't. <laughs> so zo. So zo. So zo. So 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 is what we have here. But it's from, and this is important, we have sos, but it's from sozo. What happens when you have the sigma plus zeta is that the zeta goes away and we keep the sigma. So this is the future, right? Okay. So it's, they will say. Mm -hmm. You got that? So the theta, the zeta, and the, uh, what was the other letter? Theta, zeta, and, uh, no. no. I'm confusing myself. The tau, the delta, and the theta drop out. But so, so. Theta drops out as well. What am I missing? 
Is that from a different root? Yes, it is. It's from a different root. That's why. So the lexical form is uh, sozo. The true root of the word is sod. So delta, tau, theta. I knew it dropped out. I just didn't remember why. So that's they will save. Okay. And who is the they that will be saving? The apostolo. Apostoloi. So oi is your nominative plural. Masculine nominative plural ending. So the apostles will save. Who will they save? Uh, men and accusative plural. Good. What type of men? Dead. Men of death or um, dead men? No. Probably not. So this is one of those Wrong. things. Yeah, you, that is a nuance of the genitive yeah. that is uh, possible. Wrong. So he wants you to just translate it now because you've only learned this form of the genitive, just of. So your translation would be apostles will save men of death. So from. where is it from? Or they? Spanish has a conjunction that can function in about 20 different ways, if I am right. All right? Yes. I forget which one that is. Um, but, but conjunction, not, not a conjunction, but a, a preposition, sorry where one preposition can mean like 10 different things in English? Yes. Well, the genitive case can mean maybe 30 different uses of it. Now, that is a somewhat inflated number. Uh, I'd, I'd probably bring it down from there, but one of those uses would be what's called the um, is it the oblative genitive? I think is what he calls it, and that is away from. So the genitive can communicate distance from. Away from death. Yes? Mm -hmm. You're confused about uh, the second word there? Well, when I first did it, I saw the verb as being singular, and then the next word being plural, and I couldn't make it work. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to get to that one because it is very important for us. I think he has a, uh, a note in here on that specific thing in like smaller text. Forget where it is. But without going there, a kue, this is 15, a kue tek lagus oiko. How would you translate that? Well, I had a kue being um, to hear third person singular um, present tense verb. And then I had taken out as a um, child, but I had two plural children. And um, I figured it would be nominative rather than the data. Neuter, plural, and the question is nom or accusative. But since the next word was accusative. Mm-hmm. Well, goose. And then the word after that was dative. Oiko. Then I threw the techno into the nominative. It was a good, and see, our sense for translation works out uh, for us quite a bit in some cases. So what we have here is a third singular clashing with a plural firm, form. And any English teacher in the world will tell you what's wrong with that. There's no agreement in agreement. Sorry. Subject, yeah. Subject, verb, agreement. In English, this would look like children is hearing. All right. In the Greek, though, your plural neuter, distinctly neuter uh, nouns 
can go with singular verbs. It is one of the rules of the, the Greek language. Can or always can. does? Can. Can. Not can. always does. The way that this is typically explained, um, grammatically speaking, is, is that the group of children is viewed as a single entity. Uh, it's an aggregate noun. Yes. Like rice. The rice is cooked. Mm -hmm. and, uh, <laughs> data, too, is a aggregate. So you use a singular so Data is. Correct. Mm. The Latin is plural. But if you want to use Latin, you use italics. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yes, an aggregate. It's also called an aggregate noun. Yeah. Yeah, where it can be viewed as one single grass. entity. Mm -hmm. Grasses. Good. No, you don't say grasses, you say the grass. I got the grass. Right. But it means singular. I mean, it's an aggregate, so it's good to mm -hmm. Right. So that is uh, an example of that in, in Greek. Can you say that again for our notes? Like, neuter. Neuter, plural nouns can go with singular. Verbs, third singular verbs. Mm -hmm. I believe they can also go with uh, plural verbs, but that would be natural for us to see. You want to take stabs at um, translations you haven't seen? So, what was the complete sentence? Oh, yes. That was the only part that interested me. Al akousen akloi lagus. Where were you? 15? 15 is the second half. Second oh, half okay. Of it. And, and the ala lost its A because the next word started with an A. Good. Yes. Um, yeah. Very good. So it's an, an, an and or a but? It's but. Okay. So but uh, the crowd or but crowds. Here, words in a wilderness or a desert. The whole thing there was children hear words in a house, but crowds hear words in a desert. Ancient Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> Questions there? Yes. Um, back to, I guess, the earlier question about accusative as direct object. Um, I, what I saw, I guess, relates to that with the dative. Um, the dative can be looked at as having a built-in preposition, but it's not an indirect object. Yes and no. Uh, English, in, in the sense of English, it becomes a prepositional phrase. But it would be wrong to say that the dative itself uh, has a preposition built into it. It is just a use of the dative. Um, so the dative of location is what we would call this, in a desert. The, the, re the reason I make that distinction is because I, I do want to save the term prepositional phrase in Greek for actual prepositions, because we will encounter those in the next lesson. So this is, it's not a prepositional phrase, but the moment we translate it into English, it becomes a prepositional phrase because we have to use the word in to communicate that. Because you can have a dative without an accusative. Yes, in a number of different instances, one that you don't even or see at the moment. Some verbs take their objects in the dative. Some verbs take their objects in the genitive. They're rare. So. It's, a, it's Debbie's okay. Debbie's explode. Yeah. <laughs> it really is okay. <laughs> Debbie, you, you understand the syntax quite well. So there are fewer exceptions in Greek than most languages. <clears throat> I'll let you guys take a break now. <laughs>
do you feel somewhat comfortable moving to chapter five? Okay. We're, we're going to cover chapter five again next week because that's the way I have everything built in for the syllabus. But I do want to start this, and your homework is mainly going to be learning vocabulary because it's going to take a while. If you look at pages 38 through 40, that's all. Were those all on the cards? On the okay. Yeah. So. Uh -huh. I saw them. <laughs> what now? 51. Yeah. The good thing news is, is a lot of those will be uh, repeats. Not repeats, but uh, common like uh, agape, you know, to be loved, or um, cardio for heart. Cardio yeah. for heart. Grafe for writing. Well, you got oika in here. O oikia, uh, house. Yep, and that's a different form of oikos, just in the uh, feminine. You have uh, kara for Carissa. Meaning joy, or um, does it get any easier, or the homework assignments pretty much the same way? So, like the precepts, usually the first lesson is just a bear, mm -hmm. and for new students, we say the first lesson's a bear. Just get through the first lesson, and then you'll do fine after that. But I'm not hearing that. <laughs> okay. Chapter five. Uh -huh. You're looking at the vocabulary, uh -huh. and he gives you more vocabulary because of the fact that you've already tackled the concept of the declension. Okay. Um, that, it, syntactically speaking, is very difficult for an English speaker to conquer the idea that words can find their way in different places in a sentence where they shouldn't be in English. Okay. Um, so, syntactically speaking, this chapter is very easy. Yeah. You have endings, um, you'll have multiple different endings here, but they all follow routine patterns even though the sets are different. And, and I'll explain those to you. But so far as uh, vocabulary is concerned, kind of ganged up on you there because of the fact that syntax is easier. The chapter after that is going to be Difficult syntactically speaking because you have to learn the way in which adjectives function. But uh, but so far as memorization is concerned, there's nothing. You don't have to memorize anything for that chapter. You've already learned all of the forms for the clinchins. I think that his uh, vocabulary is even easy on that. Chapter 7, you'll have a little bit of rote memorization, but you've already learned the concept of the verb. It's and, okay. Yeah. So, there, so yes and no. I think that each different lesson is going to be met with a little bit of a challenge in a different area. Okay. <clears throat> so chapter 5 is about nouns with the first declension. Nouns in the first declension will be primarily feminine. And you will see a couple of different examples where you have masculine nouns in the first declension. They are rare. It's like uh, mathetes and prophetes, um, and I, I select a few others, but that's not so bad. You have a handout in front of you, I think, on the first declension. I tried to give you handouts there so that you have just the things you need to memorize. We have what is called the pure alpha. Singulars and plurals, as always. Mm. Have your nominatives, genitive, dative, accusative, and vocative. Your vocative forms in the first declension are all going to be the same. <clears throat> You'll see on your handout there that I've made it easy for you instead of having to dig through um, the pros to find out the different rules with a pure alpha. You're looking at epsilon, iota, and rho. And what do I mean by you're looking at? Okay. In his examples, you have the word hamera. If I cut off that first ending,
first letter after your ending is a row. Tells me it falls into the category of the pure alpha. You can do that for all of your vocabulary words in this chapter. If you look on page 38, you have the word aletheia, the last, the first letter, the one that's before the ending is an iota. So it tells you it's going to be a pure alpha. Pamartia, iota, pure alpha. Basileia, iota, pure alpha, etc. All of those nouns are in the pure alpha. Feminine types of the phonate type on uh, C, page 39, agape, etc. You will learn them with the proper ending, virtually. This is just to tell you what to expect for that particular noun. Mm. Your pure alpha endings, you have in the nominative. Ah. This will come in conflict, obviously, with your neuter plural nominative, plural accusative, right? The I. So be aware of that. Then os, dative is a, accusative is on, vocative is the same, a. Your plural it is I, own, ice, us, yeah. The plural is the easiest. If you were to compare these to your masculine nouns, you have oi, own, voice, goose. Boy. Notice how all you have to do is substitute an alpha for all of these, and that this is the only exception to that there, because it, instead of being aus, it drops the upsilon and becomes os. For the accusative over here, you can share similarities with your masculine, because that was on, <clears throat> this was O, just becomes the alpha, this was U, and that's where it kind of breaks down, there and there. So these were your masculine meanings, and I'll get those out of your way. You don't get too distracted by them. If you memorize this set, you can construct the rest of them. Your pure eta, which will be all else, with the exception of those letters that you see at the mix, zeta, sigma, xi, and c. Um, the eta ending will be for the rest of your feminine nouns. I, I want to make sure I got a grip on this for you. Okay. okay, now this is first declension. Yep. Okay, now these aren't all feminine. Almost all of them are. Almost are. He's throwing a masculine in here, and I thought we had that covered from last week on the second declension. Mm -hmm. So there, there are. It gives you mathetes on page thirty-nine. He delineates them for you so that you know when you memorize them. <clears throat> there are five words there: mathetes, prophetes, stratiotes, okay, telones, hypocrites. Those are masculine nouns. You will know that by that little article that's sitting there. The ha. Okay. Those are it. There, there may be a couple of other exceptions, but most all of them, most all nouns in the first declension are feminine. There are no neuter nouns in the first declension. Okay. It's primarily Feminine. Primarily feminine. Okay. Now, the word you wrote up there, if I remember right, Emera, 
desert wilderness, right? No, that is uh, um, that's a Aramos. Hey, Mara is day. It's yeah. a new vocabulary word. Okay. This is feminine. Day. Twenty-four hours in it. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Now I'm getting in focus. That kind of threw me. I thought that was you, okay. a masculine man. No, no, no. no, no, no. Really. Okay. This was the noun you were thinking about. Yeah. I've taken the test, so it's all gone. Yeah, no, that's spelled wrong. Well, I think it was with an epsilon, not an eta. An epsilon iota? Yeah. No, an epsilon, not an eta. Yeah, that's right. Let me array once. Yeah. Any other questions before I go on? Because this is a little bit to take in. We're reorienting ourselves around the. Uh, the Why is it first sequential for feminine, female, masculine, and neuter? Second, what does that mean? That spelling you did. And I saw a third sequential. Uh, no, no particular reason. No. <laughs> that I know of. Okay. It's just. Uh, Declensions are simply a word that tells you that it follows a specific set of, uh, or a, a specific grouping. It almost sounds like you're declining a decline. You know, you've gone to the second level of declension here, doesn't it? You know, you're really squeezing on this now. <laughs> okay, so the Apureta. I, I mean, I, I really don't have any sort of explanation for why feminines are located primarily to the first declension. Masculines and neuter to the second. Okay. I'm not. I'm not sure why. I don't know what the reason. It's just is. what they call it. Okay. Right. All right. I can look. Because what grammarians call the uh, the ordering and the falling away. Pure eta is the same thing as okay. pure alpha. Exact same. You just substitute in the singular. We're all. All the plurals are the same throughout the pure alpha, the pure eta. So these are going to retain. It's going to be I, own, ice, boss, I. That's for pure alpha, pure eta, and mixed. Plurals stay the same. When you go from the pure alpha to the pure eta, you just substitute an eta for the alpha. A, ace, A, ain, A. Pure alpha, if you memorize pure alpha, when you move to the pure eta, substitute an eta for the alpha. So it's the, where am I looking for the eta when I see a word? Is it the very end? Very the last end. letter. Very, very end. Last so letter. If you see a word with the last letter, then you know that that's the nominative singular, first declension, most likely feminine. Correct. Mm -hmm. Or an ah. That can be more tricky, obviously, because it could be the neuter or the feminine. But then you look to see whether it has an Hopefully right. you know it's got an O. Mm -hmm. For, for that one, you would you would have memorized your vocabulary word. You would have said, "Hey, Mara. That could be a neuter, or it could be a feminine. But I remember memorizing it with the ada next to it, which tells me that it's feminine. This is your feminine singular nominative um, definite article. And it's pronounced hey." You would have memorized that as a feminine, and you would say, okay, that's a feminine, so I can't have it be a, a nominative plural or an accusative plural. It's got to be my nominative singular of the um, pure alpha first declension feminine. Does that compute somewhat? So the pure? Alpha, start with alpha and go down that way. Mm -hmm. And you get those plurals. Mm -hmm. Then you get to pure etas, and they start 
with an eta, and you have all those singular ones, but you have the same plural endings between the alphas and the etas. Correct. And the mixed. Yeah, you haven't gotten there yet. Right. It's on your sheet, though. So I'm just mean that the, the plurals are going to stay the same throughout every single uh, declension of the first declension. A mixed. Simple explanation for why mixed occurs is phonology or the way that it sounds when the alpha would have been added to the letters that are there. The zeta, sigma, xi, and c. In front of those letters, it becomes a mixed declension. And it's the same almost. And we start off with alpha, one pure alpha, two pure etas, one pure alpha. A, ace, a, on. And then your plurals stay the same. I, own, ice, os. What about the five? Ah. Uh, throughout the first declension, there is no difference between the nominative and the vocative. They're all the same. Same with the second declension, except for the masculine singular. It's the only one that has a unique form for the vocative, which is a. Eh. Part of the reason why he doesn't list them is because that's the only exception. Honestly, just learn your pure alpha and know that pure alpha singular is the same as the pure eta singular. You just substitute the alpha for the eta. You have that whole paradigm. The mixed. I mean, really, if you have the alpha and you know that happens with the eta, you will still be able to figure out what these endings are because they're a mixture of alpha and eta. I'm trying to reduce the amount of yeah, memorization was, that you have to do. So the plurals are all the same. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that one's... All plurals are the same. The alpha and the eta are really the same. Mm -hmm. And then on the mixed endings, it's... The two middle ones. The ones in the middle. Take the alpha and the eta. Now, Jacob, I'm, I'm sure you covered this, and I think Debbie may have asked you too, but what do you mean by the pure alpha ending? Is that the end of the root of the word? The pure alpha I ending the back, yeah. is the ending itself that tells you whether it's the nominative, the genitive, the dative, the accusative, vocative. Same with the pure eta ending. Okay. That, those are the endings. Now, whether you determine how you determine whether a word has a pure alpha or a pure eta, uh -huh. you take off the ending itself right. and look at the last letter after you take off that ending. Okay, so then here for the pure alpha, you've got the epsilon, the iota, and the rho. Mm -hmm. And then you've got everything else with the pure eta. Mm -hmm. And then I've got the mixed endings here. Right. I, and, I, and I know that the ordering in which I put those yeah. on the chart is somewhat illogical because you would want the mixed in there before. Well, I, I know. But at the same time, I, I want you to see the connection between the pure alpha and the pure eta more than I really care about. Well, I'm looking at this and going, what's left of the pure eta? <laughs> Everything except for those uh, seven letters. Okay. Okay, so looking at page 38. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> And taking the first word, which means truth. Mm -hmm. If you were to take that alpha off, correct. Because it's got an I over there, you know it's a pure alpha. Yes. Not because it had an A at the end of the word. Right. What are you looking at? There? Okay. Page thirty-eight under feminine nouns. Yeah. The first word there that translates truth. Yeah. It's not. A pure alpha because it has an alpha at the end of the word. It's when you take the alpha off, and the letter is an iota. Right. That makes it a pure alpha. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, nine times out of ten, 
if you just look at that ending there, the alpha that's there, you're going to, and you guess if it's a pure alpha, you're going to be right. But once you get to the mixed, you're going to learn the mixed um, that could have the alpha, I think it's the alpha ending could, to could begin be. with. And it determine, it depends upon what letter precedes it as to whether it is mixed or whether it is. Can you give us an example of the mix from these letters of page? Um, he's got them listed there, nouns of the doxa type. Okay. Under B? Mm-hmm, under B. So, so for that first one. Gloso. I was going to take, take your shot. <laughs> Sorry. Glosa. <laughs> Heck, glosa. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so I take the A off, I get a sigma, I'm down there in the next inning. Right. Doc Yep. Right? Okay. So Doc Su, I mean Doc, um, yeah, so it would be decline. Doc Sa, Doc Se, Doc Se, Doc San. And it's because and it's it's sort of like if it isn't those it's not one of the seven letters. It's a puree. Then you just automatically go to that third column. Mm -hmm. And I I know that this is why he saved this one. He reordered your learning of them. He made you learn the second declension first, um, as opposed to the first, because the first one has these yeah. more intricate rules than the second declension did have. But if you honestly, honestly, if you reduce it to the pure out and you learn these, and you just learn those simple lines that I told you, substitute the eta for the pure alpha, all your plurals are the same, one, two, one. Yeah, I think once we track the groove on that second declension, that's the, the first one, it's probably going to be a little more easier to digest. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. <clears throat> and this is why I'm splitting this, <laughs> teaching <laughs> this one up into two different, uh, two different weeks. Because that's the first part of this lesson. The second part of the lesson are your articles. Mm. And I want you to be able to go home and try your hand at a couple of translations. Um, although we're going to do more of that next week. So I'm going to cover the articles very, very hastily. Didn't the Jehovah's Witnesses bloom out of one article in the book of John? The word they bloomed out of more than just one article. They bloomed <laughs> from the Arians, but they take their... Uh, they did battles on John 1 1. Yeah. It's the article. Alright, so you have masculine articles, your neuter articles, and your feminine articles. I'm going to try to do this all from memory. Hopefully I can. Should we write it down? <laughs> <laughs> yes. What is an article? Okay, an article. It's a good place to start, isn't it? Well, we're talking about John 1. I don't know. Uh, what brought up. What now? Bring it to John 1. No, I'm, I, it's, that is far too complex of an issue. But, but in a sentence, right? <laughs> what English word is an article? An article, it, we have indefinite articles in English, indefinite articles in English. And indefinite, very simply put, is A. Oh. Definite is B. Greek does not have an indefinite article, it just has the definite. You can create an indefinite article in Greek in the same way that you can do it in English. Instead of saying a in English, we can say one. And they can do that in Greek as well. Article is just D. You're masculine. You should know these already because they're with your vocabulary. Right? So ha is your masculine singular article. So, pronounce ha. ha, because of that rough breathing mark. Yes, did you? No, I was just going to, mm. that makes an, an H. Right. Your neuter is ta. Yes. <laughs> Pull your feminine <laughs> is hey. So these are all with your vocabulary. You should 
at least have a visual familiarity with them because you've been learning your vocabulary. Say the pronunciation again. Hey. 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 Hey or hey. 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 Mm -hmm. Everything else is going to follow your endings. So what was your genitive ending for masculine? Ooh. Ooh. Good. Now, for the article, you just add a tau in front of it. What was your data? Oh. oh. You just add a tau in front of it. What was it for your accusative? On. On. You just add a tau in front of it. What was your plural nominative? Oi. Oi. Now it just becomes oi. We're not breathing more. So it goes from the smooth to the rough, oi. What was your genitive? Own. Own plus tau, tone. Just picking up the speed. Voice was your ending, it's now voice. Oos was your ending, it's now toos. For your neuter, your ending here was oo, so it's two. Your ending was o. So it's toe, and your nominative and your accusative are always the same in your neuter, so it's just ta. Ah was your ending, so it's ta, tone, because own was your ending. Voice was your ending, so it's toys, and the nominative and the accusative are always the same, so it's ta. Mm. Hey, what's your ending actually? Because it happens if your first declension uh, masculine singular, I mean, first declension feminine singular. Uh, now we have the genitive, which was ace, tau in front, it's tace. A, tau in front, te, tang. And then I was our ending. It's high, tone, tice, and toss. In terms of memorizing your articles, you don't have to. You just have to know your declensions. Same will be the case with chapter 6 when we get the adjectives. You're not going to need to memorize anything because you're already going to have the declensions, the first and the second ones, memorized. Is this a way of, of saying, if you see this, is this a way of, of the Greek... Keep going. Like, when you say the Bible, everybody knows that we're talking about the one and only? That's one use of it, yes. So it, is, is, not to, is it to seal it out or to emphasize it in some way? Mm -hmm. All right, so here we have um, translate. Wepe anthropos. Something uh, Anthropos is oh, man. man. All right, so this is your nominative. So it's going to be the subject. A man sees. There's no definite article there. But if I were to say, Blepe ha anthropos, the man sees. We use a definite article, a man, to talk about a man in general. We don't have a man, a specific man in view. We're just saying that. We can even say, a, I'm going to put this, maybe this is a better way to do it, anthropoi, change this to usen, min see. You could say that a characteristic of men is that they see, or men in general see. But if I were to tell you that the men see, then we, we have some sort of group of men in mind, a specific group. 
The definite article just makes the noun that it's with definite. It, it, um, it has a specific one in view. Does that help at all? Has a way of pointing. Just a question about your neutral accusative. Why did the new fall off? You should be tone. Con. Or uh, third column bottom from the left. The column. This one? Yeah. Uh, look on page 37. Oh, did I? Did I type out the handout wrong? No, that is not in the handout. Yeah, uh, so on 37, if you look on the third column there, and in the neuter, neuter, yeah. neuter, it is top. Yeah. Are you wondering why the ending used to be on and it's fallen off to a uh, top? Yeah. yeah. It's just that the, um, un unlike the feminine and more like the masculine, it takes its own unique uh, article for the nominative and the accusative is just going to follow. It's the only exception to saying the, the rule that I've developed for you that all of the endings just need a tau added okay. except for the, um, the, no, uh, the nominative. Okay. Singular. Okay. The only exception to that. And that's just because of the fact that your accusative and your nominative are always following one another in the neuter. Okay. And I've already taken you guys way over time, so I'm sorry for that. So, our homework? Your homework will be to learn your vocabulary and learn your first function. Articles, too? Uh, articles, hopefully, if you know the first function well enough, you'll be able to pre produce the articles for me. <clears throat>